Hello everyone, my name is Liu. Today I'm going to present our paper, Automatic Horizontal Fusion for GPU Kernels. Machine learning and deep learning have been proven to be a useful technique in many areas. Yule, a deep learning expert, implements deep learning models and trains the model against real-world data using deep learning frameworks, such as PyTorch, TensorFlow, and MXNet. The deep learning framework then dispatches the training tasks to the dedicated hardware. Nowadays, GPGPU has been used as the default hardware to train deep learning models due to its high performance in processing data in parallel. However, the deep learning models become more and more complex due to the complexity of the underlying tasks. The training time of the deep learning model also increases when the complexity of the underlying model increases. In order to reduce the training time of deep learning model, researchers have proposed many advanced optimization techniques. For example, the traditional kernel fusion technique tries to fuse two kernels with data dependencies into one kernel. But why does kernel fusion improve the performance of the deep learning model? In order to understand why, we first need to learn some background about GPU programming and GPU architecture. Similar to CPU, a GPU contains multiple cores, caches, and shared memory. And like CPU, the GPU is specialized for highly parallel computations and therefore designed such that more transistors are devoted to data processing rather than data caching and flow control. This shows an example of a GPU program. A kernel function implements a kernel that will be executed in GPU. Each core will execute the same kernel function with different input. The program used thread ID to distinguish different threads. A GPU program usually contains multiple threads. Each thread is executed on a GPU core and the threads are grouped into blocks. Each block is executed on one streaming multiprocessor. A GPU program usually contains multiple blocks, which is called grid. The execution time of a GPU program is determined by kernel launch time, kernel execution time, and data copying time. Going back to our example, we now know that Fusing two kernels into one kernel allows the GPU to launch two kernels at the same time and avoid passing data between GPU and CPU. Meanwhile, researchers also try to train models in parallel based on their topology orders. For example, in this figure, the max pool kernel and conf kernel can be run in parallel because they don't need the output from each other. Most deep learning frameworks use CUDA streams to launch kernels in parallel. Unfortunately, kernel parallelism using CUDA streams is not controlled by developers and only achieves block-level parallelism. Since the most GPU kernels usually contain many blocks, which will fill up all available blocks in the GPU, this prevents blocks from the other kernel from starting. As a result, kernels are still executed sequentially. Now, we have the question, can we force two kernels to be launched within a block and achieve thread-level parallelism? To solve this problem, we propose horizontal fusion. Similar to traditional kernel fusion techniques, horizontal fusion takes two kernels as input and returns a fused kernel, unlike traditional kernel fusion, which runs two input kernels sequentially. Horizontal fusion runs two input kernel in parallel by separating threads into two groups and launching each kernel using the corresponding threads. But you may ask, why do we want to achieve thread-level parallelism? This is because we believe thread-level parallelism can actually improve the performance of the kernel execution. In order to understand this better, let's first look at how a GPU runs a block. Instead of executing each thread individually, the GPU executes 32 consecutive threads together in a lockstep fashion. This minimum scheduling unit is called a warp. 
A warp is eligible to execute if three criteria is satisfied. First, all data required for the warp's next instruction is ready. Second, there are available idle resources in GPU. And third, the warp is not stalled by any barrier. However, if there is a time-consuming instruction, such as memory read instruction in one warp, blocking its execution, all warps are likely to be stored at the same location since they are executing the same kernel. If no warp is eligible, the entire streaming multiprocessor will be idle. On the other hand, Horizontal Fusion fuses two kernels into one kernel and allows a warp scheduler to interleave instructions from two different kernels. Having instruction requesting different hardware resources in a kernel is beneficial because it tends to increase the number of eligible warps for the scheduler. But implementing horizontal fusion still requires us to solve two practical challenges. The first challenge horizontal fusion faces is that there are synchronization barriers in the input kernels which require the entire kernel to block until all threads reach the barrier. This prevents horizontal fusion from fusing kernels with different number of synchronization barriers, which makes the technique less practical. For example, in this figure, the thin thread function indicates a synchronization barrier in the kernel. Kernel 1 has one synchronization barrier, and kernel 2 doesn't have any barrier. For the fuse kernel, we only want to block a thread if it is allocated for kernel 1. If we use thin threads directly, the kernel will never terminate because the threads allocated for kernel 2 never reach the synchronization barrier. To solve this issue, we will write the synchronization barriers with inline PTX assembly. This inline assembly bar sync takes two parameters. The first one is an identifier, and the second one is the number of threads it waits for. The instruction will block until there are enough number of threads that reach the instruction with the same identifier. The second challenge is to find the optimum configuration for the fuse kernel. As we discussed earlier, the GPU tries to launch as many threads as possible when there are available resources. But the fuse kernel usually consumes more hardware resources than each individual kernel. For example, the max pool kernel uses 16 bytes of register per thread, and the convolution kernel uses 24 bytes of register per thread. The fuse kernel may use 40 bytes of register per thread. The changes of the size of the register actually affects the number of threads can be launched concurrently. To understand this better, we use the concurrent active block indicate the number of blocks and threads a GPU can launch given an input kernel. This number is determined by three factors. The first factor is the number of registers required by each block. The second factor is the size of shared memory required by each block. And the third factor is the number of threads required by each block. However, limiting the number of registers allocated for each thread to increase the concurrent active block is not always beneficial. This is because the excessive registers will be spilled to the main memory, which is way slower than accessing registers. Therefore, to improve the performance of the GPU program, we want to maximize the number of concurrent active blocks and also minimize the stores caused by memory instruction. In the previous example, if we want to run the kernels on 1080 Ti, which can run at most 2048 threads in parallel and has 64 kilobytes registers. For the fuse kernel, each block has 1024 threads. Theoretically, we can achieve two concurrent active blocks if we can use all threads. But max pool requires 60 bytes register per thread, and convolution requires 24 bytes register per thread. 
if we fuse the two kernels without limiting the number of registers allocated to the fused kernel, it will reduce the number of blocks can be executed in parallel because two blocks will require 8 kilobytes registers in total, which exceeds the hardware limit. On the other hand, if we spew the extra registers to the main memory, we can achieve two concurrent execute block and use all available threads. But also note that accessing the main memory is slower than accessing registers. In order to find the best configuration for the fuse kernel, each fuse generates multiple fuse kernels with different configuration and execute the kernel with synthetic data and collect the performance result. Each fuse then returns the kernel that gives the best performance. Now we have solved all practical challenges. Let's see how each fuse performs in real world. We picked nine GPU kernels, including five deep learning kernels from PyTorch and four cryptographic computational kernels from ETH miner. We only fuse kernel pairs with the same type and generated 16 four fuse kernels. We collect the performance of the fuse kernel on two GPU platforms, Tai and V100. We also generate synthetic workload for the input kernels with different execution time ratio. We compare the performance of the fuse kernel with traditional kernel fusion techniques and native execution using CUDA streams. Now let's see some highlights of the experiment results. Horizontal fusion outperformed both the standard fusion and native execution in 8 out of 16 cases on 1080 Ti and 5 out of 16 cases on V100. The average speed up of horizontal fusion fuse kernel ranges from 12 to 55% on 1080 Ti and 2 to 60% on V100. For all kernels, horizontal fusion finds a better fusion configuration compared with default configuration which is provided by the compiler. In order to understand better why horizontal fusion is effective and under what condition horizontal fusion can be applied, we further collect all execution metrics of both input kernels and fuse kernels. We will only show one pair of kernels here and you may find the complete list in our paper. Specifically, we collect the issue slot utilization, memory instruction store, and occupancy information of each kernel. Issue slot utilization represents the percentage of issue slots that issued at least one instruction. Memory instruction store represents the percentage of stores caused by waiting for memory instructions. Occupancy represents the ratio of the average active threads per active cycle to the theoretically number of threads supported on a multiprocessor. And in this example, horizontal fusion achieves 53% speed up compared with native stream execution. The memory instruction store metric shows that the max pool kernel is a memory intensive kernel and the histogram kernel is a computation intensive kernel. Remember in our hypothesis, we claim that fusing such kernel increases the number of eligible warp for the scheduler, and it, this hypothesis is confirmed by the issue stock utilization metric. The horizontal fusion fuse kernel has a higher issue slot utilization than each individual input kernel. Therefore, thread level parallelism allows a scheduler to interleave instructions from different kernels to high instruction latencies. Our result also confirms that horizontal fusion is the most beneficial if the two input kernels require two different types of resources. As we discussed earlier in the second challenge, the fuse kernel usually requires more hardware resources compared with each individual kernel. Our experiment result shows that the fuse kernel has a lower occupancy due to the increase of the size of the fuse kernel. But horizontal fusion is still beneficial because it allows the kernel to achieve higher issue store utilization.
Thank you for watching my presentation. In this paper, we propose horizontal fusion, which achieve thread-level parallelism for GPU kernels. Horizontal fusion allows scheduler to interleave instructions from different kernels to high instruction latencies. Horizontal fusion is the most beneficial if two input kernels use two different computation resources. And thank you again. Bye-bye.